Mmm, GPUs. Lots of GPUs. Mmm. <laughs> I think I have to leave that intro in. <laughs> hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Asus sent over one of their RTX 3070 jewels for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks on both Windows and Linux, and see how this card stacks up against other 30 series GPUs we've had through the studio so far. So let's do a good old thing and check her out. To kick this off guys, we've got no idea about the availability or whether or not you'll be able to buy these cards anytime soon. It seems as though the stock shortages has also hit the 3070 cards across the board too, with them actually selling out in hours and not seconds this time. Also, the GPU we're looking at today is the non-OC version of the Jewel, and finally, Nvidia didn't send us a Founders 3070, so we can't compare this card to a Founders 3070 because we physically don't have one. With that said, again, as usual with all our GPU videos, there's a lot of data to unpack with this video. There's also chapters in all of our videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of the video, it's as easy as using that pointing device in your hand and going over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description if you're checking this out on mobile. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of this video. There's uh, only going to be the out of the box figures with these GPUs because our GPU videos are designed this way because a vast majority of people will never overclock their GPUs. And this is so much more indicative of real world users. For people who want to know how these cards overclock, you've definitely come to the wrong channel. We just don't do that here. Okay, let's get the benchmarks comparisons out of the way first. The graphs are weighted based on performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. Now, the reason why we do this is the graphs change because the cards that perform differently actually get knocked down and pushed off the graph. It's actually a better indication of where the performance of these newer cards sit with the older cards. Some people don't like it, but that's what works for us and it gets the job done and it's really accurate. Okay, let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Again, you can use that magical little pause button with that pointing device you've got in your hand at any time during the video to take a bit of a look at those graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with this 1080p benchmark, is that the 3070 Joule is a little bit slower than the 3070 Gaming OC. And this is gonna be the trend across the rest of this entire video. It's just not as quick as the Gaming OC that we checked out the other day. When we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing the same differences, except that Linux usually performs better and Vulkan is better than DX12 with this benchmark specifically. At 1440p, again, the trend continues with this card being a little bit slower than the Gigabyte card. There's no surprises here. And lastly at 4K we're seeing the same thing being echoed again with both Vulcan performance slightly beating out DX12. Alrighty, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. And before someone comments something along the lines of us comparing the stock OpenGL implementation of this benchmark, we're comparing the out of the box experience. For those who know how to extract more performance out of the GPUs in Linux, you don't need to be watching these videos. You guys know what to do already. Okay, first up with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark. This one is highly GPU bound. And again, we're seeing the 3070 Joule being slower than both the 3070 Gaming OC and the 2080 Ti on this occasion. Now OpenGL, we know it doesn't perform as well and that's how it is in Linux, that's the story. We've tested this with other kernels and other distros and other combinations. We're actually probably gonna do a whole video about this later, but the reality is they're always just about the same and we always talk about this. 
So yeah, that's the story in Linux, ladies and gents. Superposition is actually turning out to be a pretty good benchmark for these 3070s because it shows them being weaker than the 2080 Ti. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing happen again in both Windows and Linux. The ASUS 3070 Dual is slightly slower than the 2080 Ti again, which is actually a good indication of how this GPU does perform with this benchmark. Next up is Basemark GPU. Now, Basemark gives us a great indication of vulgar performance in both Windows and Linux. Let's see what happened. At 1080p, we're seeing the ASUS RTX 3070 Dual pull away from the 2080 Ti and be slightly slower than the Gigabyte 3070 Gaming OC. At 1440p, we're seeing about the same differences as we're seeing at 1080p between all cards. And finally, once again, ladies and gents, this is echoed at 4K in both Windows and Linux. But as usual, let's circle back to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're gonna do some DLSS and some Ray Trace Shadow benchmarks. Although Shadow of the Tomb Raider only supports DLSS 1.0, we did include Death Stranding because of its DLSS 2.0 support. So let's see what happened. At 1440p, the results are pretty much as you'd expect. There's no surprises with this benchmark at all. The 3070 Dual is slower across the board. Moving on to 4K, we're seeing the 3070 fall slightly behind the 2080 Ti. All right, ladies and gents, let's move on to Death Stranding. We decided to do the standard 2080 Ti versus 3070 DLSS 2.0 comparison at both 1440p and 4K at max settings. We also test some professional workloads as well. Now these are the type of benchmarks most will overlook, but it's important for people who are buying these GPUs for workstations, if you can actually buy them, yep.
We ran our one hour stress test in Fermac and we couldn't get the ASUS RTX 3070 Joule above 72 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Now this card is the hottest 30 series card we've tested so far, but again, be aware that we're running this on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be different. They're probably going to be hotter and they're going to be warmer than most likely from what we observed here. And we include these results because our open air test environment is consistent and it's just basically a really good baseline for us to test thermals. You have to remember we test everything like this because we don't like to have variables. As far as power consumption is conserved, we observed it hitting around 230 watts at full load. As for what these cards offer compared to the Founders cards, you're getting a tiny bit of lighting and I'm not going to say RGB because the lighting can't be changed at all. It's completely static. It's actually kind of reminiscent of the Tough Gaming 5600 XT with its overall design, except that this is a dual fan card, not a triple fan. And I actually quite like how compact this card is. You're also getting a card again without having to switch to that new 12 pin power connector. It features two eight pin PCIe power connectors straight on the PCB of the card. And it also has solid pins. That's one to look out for there, Gigabyte. Solid pins are good. We also observed the 3070 Joule to be quite under normal usage. So that's gaming with it hitting full load with little to no coil wine. Now, to be honest, it's got a tiny bit of coil wine, but again, on an open air test system, you're gonna hear absolutely everything in a closed system. You're probably not gonna hear this card at all. And the reason why I say these things is because these acoustic observations make more sense for normal people than the numbers that you see in other types of benchmarking videos. Acoustics are only really tangible if the card's sitting right next to you, so numbers most likely will never make sense to you. I'm liking the overall size of this card too. It's got a, they call it a 2.7 slot card and it's not super long. It's a quite a nice size. And personally for builds, I prefer with working with cards like this because it's just more versatile and I don't really have to think about it fitting in a case. And I like building small systems in general. And speaking of, we've got another NZXT H1 that just arrived. So we're gonna do another video, I think, where we're gonna shove some big GPUs into the H1 and yeah, let's, let's, we're gonna do that, so stay tuned for that. We always get asked about that case, so we will do one more video with it, right? <laughs> as far as the pricing, the ASUS RTX 3070 Joule is going for around 529 US dollars or around 1,059 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Can I just go completely off script here for a second? We are getting absolutely reamed with the prices here with these 30 series cards. What do you reckon, Claire? Like absolutely reamed. The Founders is $809 and the, this one is like, like almost $200 more. Damn. Well, about $200, more than $200 more. It's ridiculous. Why is this happening? I'm frustrated. I'm sorry guys, but it's too expensive in Australia. And just adding to that, obviously these cards are sold out absolutely everywhere anyway. So you being able to get one is a whole different story. And and as I've been saying with all of these videos, regardless of all of these 30 series cards, don't buy anything just yet. Wait for rating 6,000 because in a few weeks, we're gonna know absolutely everything you need to know about every GPU on the market and whether or not you're gonna be able to buy anything is a whole nother story. Anyways, guys, what do you think of this 3070? What do you think about the 3070s in general? And let me know what you think about the Radeon cards coming as well. Personally, I'm not hyping them up. I'm just excited to see a bit of competition in the market. We've been frothing for it for a long time. So yeah, let's uh, froth a little less and actually get some relief. <laughs> anyway, I'm keen to hear all your thoughts about it. If you guys like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. Tell us what you hated about it as well. People always hate what we do. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. Uh, the reason or not why I'm like this today is I had two coffees like in quick succession and I'm really, really awake and I had a good night's sleep last night. So I probably didn't need that coffee. What do you reckon, Claire? Probably, probably didn't need, it, need that much coffee. Also, there's gonna be questions about the PC behind us. You'll see. Thanks for watching.